what we forget is when we go hard and fast, the likelihood of reactions and problems are greater. If we take it slower, like a 10%, starting with that, and then you can gradually look at, do you do more? Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Beauty Babble. Today is actually episode one of a series that we're doing on chemical peels and common skin conditions. And this first episode is chemical peel and acne. So we are going to talk about, you know, is it good to peel skin with acne? Can you, how do you do it? What type of peel? We're going to get into it all. And yeah, it's going to be fun. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> Hi, Doreen. Yeah, this has been quite a few questions happening from our viewers. And this is why we thought about doing a master class series in a sense so that we can start talking about individual conditions that are quite common in the treatment room these days. So I think the first thing we have to determine when we're analyzing the skin, what type of acne do they have? What stage of acne are they in? Mm -hmm. So maybe what we could do is kind of maybe dive into each one separately and kind of talk about what they look like, what are some recommendations and what to avoid. And Absolutely. I think the biggest thing we got to remember is each brand will have their own protocols. So you should reach out to your brand representative and ensure that it's following. So this is just a general reminder, recommendations, that type of thing. And because it is that time of year and people are starting to get back into it. So maybe you haven't touched chemicals for a little while. And it's good that you're a little nervous. I'm happy you are and asking the questions because it's good to kind of remember it all, right? Go back and kind of review and dot your I's and cross your T's, right? So absolutely. I think the biggest one that most are going into you, I mean, is salicylic, the BHA, that that's a common one to start off with, right? That people are doing. But let's talk about acne grade one. What's what does that look like? Yeah. Okay. So this one is non-inflammatory. It's the most mild of all of them. Yeah, it's congestion, right? Yeah. So much bacterial in the infection side of things. It's a rough skin. They might have a couple little pimples because of course, if the if the pore is plugged, the chances of it going into an inflammatory state, that reaction where pus is involved, you might have a few of that, but definitely it's more so bumpy congested with blackheads and whiteheads mm. and you can't get them out. Yeah. It's that kind of a, a feel. And some of them they'll mm. see the open comedone, like the blackhead side of it, but it's definitely a rougher type of skin. So I think is to look at, okay, how old is this person? What are the products they're using? Are they causing the actual comedones. Mm, that's a good point. Because some products out there, are they overdoing it? Like you, you need to really dive in and ask questions about your client and what they're doing. What have they tried before? Mm -hmm. And because people are bouncing around a lot nowadays and they're ordering things online and you just don't know what they've already done. So I think when you're diving into especially acne skins is to really find out what have they tried already? What worked and what didn't work? And why is it still not better? And when you talk about age, right? Because you said like, how old are they? How How is that a factor? Well, hormones is, is a mm -hmm. big one. So if you're dealing with a younger skin, I mean, we've had questions that people ask, can I do a chemical peel on a teenager? It's like, no, their skin is too young. That's how I was trained. I think you should ask your brand representative as well, because I think they're changing and evolving. Mm -hmm. I like the slow, the slow go on chemical mm -hmm. peel, like really on any kind of treatment, really. It's just, okay, let's see what's the cleanser you're using. What's the date cream you're using? It, the chemical peel should never be the first thing you think of for any skin, anything, not just acne. Like it is something that is a consideration that is part of a larger treatment plan for your client. So if it's an, an adolescent who is experiencing that first, you know, that grade one acne, how are the, you, you like home care? What's their home care like? Mm -hmm. or do they know how to take care of their skin? Why don't even think, I wouldn't personally, <laughs> I wouldn't even think about chemical peels until we've, you know, gone through everything, you know, everything yeah. and waited for them to get a little older because your skin is gonna do a lot of crazy things when you're a, a teenager. Mm -hmm. And I mean, granted, there are some products that have very, very like 
very low percentage of salicylic. Okay, fair enough, but we're not talking about that. We're talking you doing chemical peels at a higher percentage. That's what we're referring to right now, not the general little cleanser that has a little, you know, 2% of salicylic or something. We're talking the bigger numbers here, like 10, 15, like carry on forward, something stronger because yeah. we're talking professional treatments here, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a good step. And, and I would have them try, see if we can start cleaning the skin through treatments. And yeah, they need a little exfoliation, but because they're young, would you do an abrasive mechanical exfoliation or would you consider more of an enzymatic style, which is kind of like a chemical, but not as aggressive? Yeah. And just see if you can get that balanced out. So grade one is, hmm, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever maybe done a light sweep on a t-zone kind of thing because it was just not working mm -hmm. but we tried everything first and then very very so but and then you're, what you're doing is you're prepping the skin you're yeah for it so if it's not working but this is a series of treatment what i mean by a series of treatment would be weekly then you know what's going on with their skin and you see them so the one i should mention the one big thing about acne skins whatever grade it is what is their commitment to treatment and home care and if they're not committed I wouldn't, or I, I wouldn't say no to them. I'd say prepare them that this is a very long process. Is this a temporary fix you're looking for? Or do you want a long-term fix? And yeah. I think those are different things to look at and, and then work with them. Like, yeah, I had clients that couldn't afford to come every week. Fair. But then I said, okay, then you need to be diligent at home. This is what I need you to do at home. You know, that's all acne levels, like yeah. all grades of acne, but uh, yeah, that applies across the board. But I think like for the grade one, if you are an adult, and you have that, I think that is a good, a, a very treatable acne condition with, with chemical peels and the right home care protocols, right commitment from your client. But when it comes to the type of peel that you would do on grade one, what do you think? Well, well, basing it on whatever product they have, you have, right? If you're doing a professional treatment, I'd probably start low myself just to see if it's enough to get it because I think what we forget is when we go hard and fast the likelihood of reactions and problems are greater mm -hmm. if we take it slower like a 10 percent maybe 15 depending on you know the product but you can do both glycolic and salicylic yeah yes but also mm -hmm. we have lactic would be good yeah. As well. nice, I, I personally love lactic. Yeah, I think for like acneic skin, lactic and salicylic is a nice blend. Nice blend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can do. You I can even alternate, right? Like yeah. one week could be the salicylic, the following week could be your mm -hmm. um, lactic. Like because you're you're alternating, they're going to do different things. Each chemical, hopefully through your training for the listeners, you know the differences between and why you would choose one over the other. And yeah. I think that's important too. But yeah, I think starting with that, and then you can gradually look at, do you do more? Is it necessary? But really, I'm really hands-on when it comes to acne clients. I'm, I'm basically every week, either seeing them or hearing from them on discussions. Like it's a, it's a deep dive into commitment from on both ends, client and professional is how I look at it. Yeah. Stage page two. Stage two. Okay. So this one, I think we've stepped it up. We've graduated <laughs> to yeah. a little bit more. <laughs> so I think this, we differentiate stage two because we have more pustules, like more pimples, a little yeah. bit of inflammation and, and they start to break out. Yeah. This first kind of indicator that they're starting to actually have pimples. This se. is what you would think acne looks like. Yeah. That's that first stage part that people think. Yeah. Right. This is the other thing. If you haven't treated grade one, you're going to graduate to grade two, and this is not what you want, and so on. If you don't get great acne grade two taken care of, you will graduate more than likely to acne three, and it yeah. just carries on from there, right? But And that's um, how you progress to the different levels of acneic skin, is not having treated your skin in the proper I mean, Yeah, it's definitely hormonal or genetic, sure. like we know that, or, you know, the out outside um influences like you know that, yeah, you work in a kitchen it's greasy it's you know like external factors but that's all yeah. part of the analysis is to figure out what's been causing this i know we're not doctors but you still have to dive deep and try to figure out what they've been doing so i think mm -hmm. with this one again 
if they come into you at that point, I would, I'd still consider what are you using currently? What have you tried in the past? What worked? What didn't? How long did it last? Like how long did it work for? Because that's a, the other thing that people have commonly will say, oh, I tried this one brand and it did really good for the first few weeks. And then I started breaking out again. Mm -hmm. like, okay what were they using and try to find out because sometimes it starts to work but maybe it's too much for the skin again less is more and it's too aggressive sometimes so yeah. again I think with that it's still you're starting out slow and progressing and, and determining what home care but at this point with the breakouts you just want to hopefully catch it where it's not turning really in inflammatory and that inflammatory response is mm -hmm. to kill what's in there um in the bacteria that's starting to develop around that. But a lot of times it's the stage where the comedones and, and stuff are starting to get plugged and then they start to get infected. And it could be from the picking, it could be from them trying to get at it themselves. There's things like that, right? But the same thing applies, I would say, you know, they yeah. start off with a good home care regime. And I mean, you could possibly do the light sweep of, of the treatment, depending on what they've been using. The other thing now that's happening quite often is as soon as they have this, they're going to see the dermatologist and the dermatologist is putting them on Accutane or other acneic drugs. So you really need to make sure how long has it been since they've been on it? Are they currently yeah. on it? Because you still have to wait the six months after their last dose before you can even consider any peels. And topical, uh, like dermatologists topical, also prescribe yeah. like heavy like very strong retinol creams and stuff like that. But I think being very thorough with your intake, again, mm -hmm. I think we sound like a broken record, but especially with this case, because it's not just what you're ingesting in terms of medication, like what kind of creams are you using? What's in them? If you don't know, like maybe asking them to send you a picture or something like that. So you really kind of dive down what what kind of cream did you put on your face in the last three weeks yes exactly yeah 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 and what you know and then you you need to take the time as a professional it's just part of it if you're if you're going to take this on you need to know what they've been using you need to understand the ingredients and google's your friend just look it up and yeah. see what what it is and if you have to dive deeper does this cause comedones like just ask the question you can't be known to know everything you know i've actually in the past i've even called um a pharmacist and said i've That's got a question for you um yeah. this this i don't say it's because of someone else because they won't talk about other people so i direct as if i'm on the product i'm on the the medication myself mm -hmm. and pharmacists are probably like what are you doing <laughs> but they would just tell me, okay, what are some side effects? Is there anything you'd recommend I shouldn't do with products? You know, that type of, and then you'll understand the drug itself mm. and the adverse effects if you start doing something else with it. So when I didn't know something, couldn't find the answer, I, I've done that. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Cause I mean, we're not doctors, we're not chemists, we're not pharmacists, but the information's out there. So getting it. I think another thing that we've talked about, but maybe let's unpack it a little bit is when we talk about like home care for a chemical peel, like I think it depends, it's the side note, it could be it brand specific, like depending on the brand that you work with, but it's really getting them to use, a you know, cleanse their skin, maybe something with like a mild glycolic or salicylic in it to just slowly exfoliate and just prepare their skin and then that uh, proper hydration and all that doing it for you know a couple of weeks before they even receive their first chemical peel and I think that that is really part of the conversation to have with your client which I know can be hard for the client too because you come in and you're like okay I want to deal with this I want it gone and the reality is it's not going to happen in this treatment it's not you know it's it's a process and just that's why products and then come mm -hmm. back in two weeks that's why i always say a consultation first yes do it for free yeah because you're you're gonna have to sell your knowledge and your expertise mm -hmm. you go in you can talk about it if you want to do a phone consultation with them you can I prefer face-to-face, -face. they come into my treatment room, they get to know me, I get to know them, you'll find out way more information yeah. about them and you get to see their skin. 
you could do a skin analysis right then and there. And you and can like, ask them to bring their product with them too. Yeah. And, and I do say like, for example, I'm not going to give them every answer because you want them to you to be to you. And I get that, but you, you need to give a little bit of your knowledge to them. So one of the biggest ones that I forgot to mention is that I always check for dehydration because when your lipid barrier is off, that could be causing the breakout is because it's the natural defense mechanism of our body is to have that balance lipid barrier right so and I think that's pretty common with that? that's pretty common with people with egg skin because they're trying to strip their skin and trying to Dry get it out the, yeah yeah for sure or it could be a seasonal thing that happens to them I've mm-hmm. had that happen where they, it's the spring and all of a sudden they break out and then they tell me yeah it happens spring and fall and I went mm, dehydration mm-hmm. yeah lacking moisture right so it, it could be other things too but typically that's the one thing to look for so you might right then and there say you know what I'm going to do we're going to do a hydration treatment on you today let's get this started and balanced out and then we can carry on and start to target more so what's going on with your skin but yeah I think that's the other thing is that people forget about is that we just automatically want to start to do these peels which are great and I mean they do amazing amazing outcomes but we still need to step back a little bit and really challenge it it's there's no one answer I think that's what's hard these days is people are looking for the answer as a professional and it's not it's a puzzle everybody has their own puzzle and you only have a few pieces to that puzzle and that's your knowledge of what you know about chemical peels or -hmm. hydration treatments so how do you piece this together and determine what that is I find that fun Mm -hmm. I love that part I love to figure it out right and, and I think like, no. for, for that grade two acne too, like I think when you're doing the treatment, you can still use the same different types of chemical peels that you would in grade one, but with the grade two acne, like if you have open pustules or a lot of inflammation in certain spots, you can actually cover those with Vaseline or whatever and avoid those areas. So you can still do it, but being a little bit more cautious too after you've done all the prepping and all the it's typically at this point i found that they're more congested areas they're closer together where that's happening and that's usually because they're they're focused on it and they keep mm-hmm. going at the same spot mm-hmm. when it's scattered all over those are the best but very rare i find to yeah. find it like that they're more concentrated little areas because they're the clients typically doing something more so to that area Mm-hmm. as well. So I love that point that you said you can still do, but you might have to avoid some of those areas. Yeah. Yeah. What about um, extraction during a chemical peel? Would you extract? If it was a light chemical peel, I just went over, I'd be cautious to over extract, especially if it's in an area that's congested. I'd only pick a couple that I know are the good ones that will pop out right away, those comedones. But like, let's say, like you had mentioned, your jaw area was the area right in the lower cheek. Maybe Mm -hmm. I'd leave that area alone unless I saw a blackhead that was about to become a pustule. So listen, I'm going to just take the one out, Mm -hmm. but I'll focus on the T-zone. We'll get that cleaned up in your chin, but I don't want to aggravate the area. Yeah. I think like like your skin reacts, right? Yeah. And it depends on your peel level. Like if you're do- working with a higher peel, like oh, then avoid avoid extraction because you could cause scarring to exactly. Yeah, no, leave those pustules alone. As hard as that is, because it's very hard. Yeah. And speaking of that, like grade three now, you've graduated. Your mm-hmm. client graduated. Such a not a good graduation. Not not a place you want to go. No. Yeah, not a place you want to go to. But grade three now, you're dealing with a lot more inflammation uh the soreness the sensitivity yes right and again they these are the ones that if it if they did extract it it would just ooze forever Mm -hmm. and unfortunately they usually want you to do something with that and this is where you've got to you really got to hold back I have seen some where you can see the blackhead at the have you seen those during where there's like a little blackhead to it I'm like "Mm." It is a pustule, but it's not like the acne, what we're talking about. Yeah. This is yeah, just yeah. straight, like a hard, hard bump, almost it's red inflamed around it, but there's not really like the pus to it. 
mm-hmm. or a little blackhead at the tip of it, right? So really look at, and if you're not sure, listeners, if you're not sure what I'm referring to, Google the pictures. I know when we're doing any training and teaching, I, I do like to bring up pictures because mm-hmm. it, it's better. I mean, maybe you never had that that to type of anatomy. I remember the first time having a full-blown level three, but it wasn't all over. It was just right on the cheeks and that was it. Oh, nice. Yeah. So a little bit more controlled. It was more controlled and I knew she'd been doing things to it because then it's not hormonal. Hormonal tends to be, you know, the jaw, the chin, the neck, and then it spreads into the the cheeks typically like that. But, but yeah, you can look that up to see, and you've got to tell your clients, do not, do not do extractions on these. So it's really a big part of it is educating, teaching them proper home protocols, getting them really onto a set regiment before like a client that comes in with grade three acne, you wouldn't want to just do a chemical peel on them. Not that you ever want to just do right away. Right. But with this really a longer, a longer term, like, could you do a chemical peel possibly, but later on down the road, not your first kind of, I think, yeah, there's options first. I think we think we got to, yeah, that we have to do a chemical peel right away. But I think that's educating your client and let them know why you're doing what you're doing. And I think that was the biggest takeaway for my clients was that I would help educate them to why we're doing what we're doing and also in the, in what you're able to commit to. Yeah. Like, yeah, we can, but we're going to do this, this, and this first. I had a client that if well, he was a teen, so obviously we didn't chemical peel him, but what I would do other than like home care, he would come in like once a week and we'd do like a blue light therapy. And it would just sit under the light to just kill that bacteria and just get that a little bit more calmed in the skin. So I think combining something, so think outside, like what else do you have that treat the skin? And maybe down the road, a chemical peel would be an option, but. Right. Especially to watch because depending on acne three and well, acne four for sure, but the scarring that will come out of it as well. Yeah. the biggest thing that people forget is sun sunscreen. Cause soon as you have, when acne starts to heal, you're left, they're left kind of live a little bit with like that pigmentation stain, I call it. It's a type of hyperpigmentation, but it's from the acne. So when the blood flow into those areas like that, it's concentrated with melanin, right? So it hits the sun, guess what? Down the road, it's gonna start showing up, right? And then the acne scarring at a tissue level is another thing that can start to happen. And then chemical peels are great for scarring, right? So once they've healed, when can you start maybe targeting like target areas of scarring, especially the the younger, like the the sooner it's healed, the quicker you can repair and help the scar through uh, different modalities. So it's not just a chemical peel, there's microneedling, there's chemical peel, there's light therapy, there's so many things. And then having your client now, I mean, back when I was doing this, you didn't sell light therapy to your client, right? So, I mean, that's an option. How how badly do they want to fix this? Is that one thing they can do? So talking of grade three, grade two, grade three, it's like, okay, now start looking at, okay, what's the genetics behind it? Is there something in the family? Um, especially men that have it, maybe, maybe the male hormone is too strong, right? And that, so now this is genetic. So their skin is likely to have acne skin breakouts, not as badly because they'll be in more control, but that's teaching yeah. your client, right? That, of what they need to do for the rest of their life, basically. It tends to be more males on that part, I find, but some women now with the different hormone imbalances that are happening, it, it can be part of that too, but this is now you're hovering into the doctor world if it's not controlled. So if you've done the, the first steps, right? Like, can you slow down the breakouts? Are they less and less? Are they starting to heal? And this is over a period of time, then then you're on the right track. If they're, they're continually having these bad breakouts every week, every few days, I think at that point you need to have the doctor involved because there's something else going on. Cause you can't, you can't control it. You can't slow it down. It's not working for you. So then you can say to them, let me know what the doctor says. Why don't we do some nice healing treatments? You can still do that. You can still, still do LEDs. You're just not doing chemical peels. You don't say bye-bye, go see your doctor. Now you just need to know what they're on, what they're doing 
And how can you encourage the healing side of all of this too? Mm. That's and a really good point. Hydration. I still worked with clients that went to doctors. I just said, okay, we're not going to, we're not going to do some of these other things because I know what you're on, you know, feel free to let, let your dermatologist know that you're, you're coming to do facials, but there's no extractions in the area, no chemical peels in the area. We're just healing and nourishing the skin to calm. And most of the time, the dermatologists are like, yes, the times when they say no is usually because they have a clinic and they can do your treatment. So that's, yeah, that's typically why they would say it. But if it's a dermatologist going in, get your medication, get out kind of a plate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and right. then stage four, well, that's just a whole other ball game as well. I think that one is saying it's the same preamble though, right? Like yeah. you can educate on home care, you can help calm the skin, but that becomes something that is beyond our ability to treat. Yeah. And this is when you're going to start seeing structural changes to the skin, like the, their, their acne is almost like a big bump mm -hmm. and there's not like, but there's nothing to squeeze almost, you know, or they have this little spot that you want to think to extract. And that's the other thing where a lot of times we're trained on doing extractions, but you need to know when not to do extractions, especially with acne skins and yeah. the different grades of acne. But once that's under control and the breakouts stop, you can start targeting the scarring size. So this is where they're left with the little pits yeah. of the skin and some greater than others. They're not like mm -hmm. almost like the little, I won't call them craters, but mini ones like that. And they're not perfect. They're like in lines. It could be like they're missing things, but that's when, you know, your chemical peels really do help. It's yeah. not a fast process. It's a slow but over the years and take pictures. That's the other thing where I'm always telling people, no matter which one you're dealing with, take before and after pictures because they're their hardest critic is on themselves. And you're not going to notice it on yourself because yeah. you're looking at yourself every day. So it's yeah. good to look back on pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And stage four tends to be a larger area of the face. Like we're talking more than half to three quarters is, is broken out, right? So we're talking a larger area. It's not typically in one. And that's when you start to see it into the cheek area. I, I find anyways, in my experience, but it's not held to just that, but you know, you've got the neck in under the chin area, that kind of thing. But I think the biggest thing is just remember, remind yourself as a professional, what other options can they do at home? So a light therapy, maybe with the different light options is a good idea because then they can use it for different things. So this is an investment long-term, not just the blue light therapy. Yeah. Hopefully the red there, the orange, the blue, the like whatever you can get and just tell them you just need to do it every day for, you know, five minutes on the area. I usually say 10 because then more than likely they'll do it for five, <laughs> but then it'll start to help heal. Right. And then you can alternate and say, you know what, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or just tell them one day blue, one day red, one day blue, one day red, like just play. You're going to, it's a puzzle. It's just a puzzle and there's no right answer. I think that's what we find hard these days as professionals. We just want step one, two, three, four, five. And it's, it's and there's, not quite like that. There's different paths that, you know, two estheticians can come up with treatment plans. They probably can both reach the client's goal, but they would be completely different. Yeah. And then reminding, if you do dive into these chemical peels and you're, you're really getting into it, you really need to educate your client on what they should not be using at home. Mm -hmm. They should only be using what you are doing or recommending because then you can't guarantee the outcome of what they're doing at home. So I don't tell them to throw out their product. You can hang on to it. But for mm -hmm. right now, I, I need to know that you can do this. This is not a sales game. This is a treatment plan. It's not just about reaching your goals, but it's also about reducing risks of post-treatment scarring or hyperpigmentation or anything. Yeah. yeah, you can't control that if you don't know what what is being used on the skin. Yeah. And, and being blunt to your client. I said, you know, if, if we're not careful what we're doing here, me as a professional and you at home, we can have adverse effects. Yeah. You can have more breakout. You can have pigmentation, hyperpigmentation reactions. You can have the inflammation, you know, less is better. Yeah. Just think long-term. And, and sometimes you have to explain to them in a different format that they'll understand you for example I don't know you haven't seen I've used the dentist so many times you need to see the hygienist but you haven't had a cleaning in years is it better to go in could they do it all oh yeah 
they can do it all right in one session, about an hour or more, but your gums are going to hurt. They're going to be sensitive for days. They're going to be, you know, the likelihood of you being able to floss after is likely no, because they're all inflamed. But if you went in one week for a little bit and then two weeks later and two weeks later, you would eventually get it all off without having the adverse effects of things. Right. So it could be that analogy to people that sometimes they understand that better. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I think um, really understanding, okay, what can I do? What are they using at home? What have they tried before? What worked? What didn't? Of course, their age, trying to understand and genetic and what to avoid at home now, you know, mm -hmm. hydration, soothing kind of things as well as we don't want to dry out the skin. A lot of product lines I find today are, are, are leaning more to that now. Like they're really looking that we do not want to dry out the skin. It's not good for it. Could we, could we spot treat and dry out something? Okay. Yeah. But not the entire yeah. regime of the face. Right. So I think that's another thing, but yeah. Yeah, I think we covered it all. In, in a nutshell, yes, you can use a chemical peel on acne skin, depending on the acne. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. This one's a puzzle, my friends. And yeah, and at the end of the day, the answer is no, if you haven't been trained on doing chemical peels at all. Yes, this isn't something you just want to Google. Like you, if you are going to do a training, think of the clients or models that you can have to use in your training would be ideal. So if you ask them, will you provide models in the acne side of things or should I find them myself? Or, and a lot of them are gonna say, you have to find your own models. So start looking to see who's the model you could use in this training. Cause then you have, that's how you learn is the actual thing, actually working on people. Yeah. It's so essential. And then maybe that's an, a, a bonus for your models that you're, you're learning and say, Hey, I think you'd be a great candidate for this. And I can learn with you and I'm under the guidance of the trainer and, you know, try to explain all, you know, that they're safe and would they be willing to do it? Because then your hands-on is going to be the best experience ever. Absolutely. All you right. It all. Yeah. I think so. But I mean, if people have questions, please feel free to reach Thanks. out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And I hope this helps. We'll be back with the second episode of this series next week. Thanks for listening to Beauty Babble. 